Hello everybody, my name is Gattis Kandis and I was in jail in USA about 20 years ago, 18 years ago. So as I was growing up in Latvia and I was always watching American movies and I was always so fascinated with USA. Yeah, that reminds me. And so then eventually when I went to university in Latvia, I got the student exchange program thing. So I went to USA, I went to Minnesota to work in the summer and I absolutely loved it. Like I, that was like one of my best experiences ever. So after the season finished, then I thought what I'm going to do. So I decided to go to Los Angeles. Uh, while I was still in Minnesota, I was talking to some casting director because I always wanted to be actor. So I, I got, I finally got to Los Angeles in December. First time in my life I saw everything was green, you know, trees were green and grass was green and I was just like so overwhelmed. Uh, anyway, so I, as I got the, uh, to Los Angeles, I started going to acting uh, school. Uh, I th it, it was called Van Maer Academy. In Hollywood and I loved it so much it was like oh I loved it so I, I went there you know try, trying to become an actor so anyway I went there for a few months uh, then uh, unfortunately my visa ran out uh, like I did extend my visa uh, for like another half a year but then it ran out and so I was basically undocumented uh, I was not able to get a job or uh, and do anything so then um, I made I made a fake social security card and so I went to the central casting in Los Angeles uh, to to become a extra you know I thought well that that's a good start you know I was I was like 20 years old I was like well that that's a good start so I went there and they were very happily going to take me on they said they're going to guarantee me four days a week extra work and I was like I was like overjoyed I was like oh my goodness this is like my dream coming true you know I'll start as an extra and then you know hopefully that will lead me to acting uh, so then you know I, I showed them my uh, fake social uh, security card and they obviously knew it was fake so they they said you're just wasting our time you know go go, go away so that got me very, uh, very sad. Like I was, I was very depressed because I was so close to my dream yet there was nothing I can, I could do about it. So then I did um, quite a foolish thing, I think. Um, you know how like in American movies often, you know, like some somebody or something wins even if it might be against the law simply because you know it's a good thing you know it's a good so i was i was thinking well you know i'm a, i'm a good boy you know i should be getting a green card but i had no idea how to do it so <laughs> what i did i on purpose i had a car at that time i on purpose was driving past police like speeding past so to get their attention so they they would start chasing me um the so i did that and so yeah they started chasing me with the lights on and, and the alarm thing on so i was like running from them but not fast and i was still like showing my uh, indicators you know which way i'm gonna go but i was not stopping because now i was <laughs> i was like not sure what to do uh, so I just kept driving like slowly, not, not fast. And so like, I started noticing there were more police cars behind me and I was like, didn't know what to do. So eventually I ran into a dead end street, meaning there was nowhere to go. So now I had to stop. Um, so now when I stopped, uh, you know, the, the, the police were there and so I turned around and there were about 10 police cars and also a helicopter. They did, this was like in the night time, like a late, late night. So it was dark. There's a helicopter as well shining, you know, the big torch at, at my car as well. So now, you know, like the poor policemen were like saying, oh, put, put your, uh, put your um, uh, hands out, out the window on the roof. So I do, you know, I put my hands out on the 
roof uh, like and then after a while you know my my hands get tired because you know i'm I'm not a superman so i, I kind of put like uh, put them down again and they're like like shouting when they, they're like put your hands back on the roof so i put my hands back on the roof and then you know then they come like slowly approach me they like what did they open i don't remember if they opened the door or not and then then uh, they i think they did open the door and then they were like, oh, you know, c c get out the car, but like ba backwards. So now, now I got out the car. I don't know, mate. I can't remember whether they opened the door or it was me. Anyway, I got out the car, fa uh, like with my back towards them, and they they told me, you know, like you know, c keep keep your like hands behind you. And so. It was it was quite unusual, quite unusual feeling because I presume they were probably aiming their guns at me and I was like, you know, didn't know what to do. Anyway, so then they slowly, slowly approached me and they, you know, like put, put uh, handcuffs on me and they put me in their police car. So <laughs> you might wonder why did I do it? My reasoning was, you know, I'm going to tell them my story and they will, you know, feel sorry for me or maybe feel so inspired that they will give me a green card. Uh, instead, they said they're going to take me to jail. And I was shocked. I didn't expect it. I was like, me? I I'm a good boy. Like, I, I never done any crime. Why, why should I go to jail? So they, uh, they, I was, I was just sitting in the car and crying. Like instead of talking to them, I was, I was shocked. I was crying. So they did take me to jail. To whatever the the first stage is, there was like I was now together in uh, like a room with maybe like forty other guys, and there's literally nothing else there. Just like couple holes in the floor for for the you know number one and two. That you might need to do so everybody was literally around you uh, if you needed to do that so i was there for i don't know for how long like many hours i was like shocked you know in, in my head i was like shocked i could not believe i was there then eventually i was transferred to another room to wait for longer by the way that they were feeding peanut butter uh, jelly sandwiches and milk that's all they had uh, but I didn't eat anything for 24 hours. I was like so shocked I didn't eat for 24 hours. Like if you know me, I eat all the time, but then then I didn't. So I was like uh, sleeping on the floor and I had got a, got a toilet paper. So I was using that as a uh, pillow, just waiting for, you know, for the next step. Uh, eventually, like uh, it, it took about 24 hours for, for me to finally be put like in a cell. So they put me in a cell together with another guy. I don't remember who that was. And then, the, then it hit me like, you know, the cell was kind of small cell, but the window, the window was that that like uh, shocked me. It was like this this thin window is may maybe like I don't know like that long, and like this deep, you know, like that deep. So it it was like the wall was maybe like a yard thick wall and so i was there now i was i was i was just crying i was like i could not believe it i remember this other guy was just kind of like looking at me um so so i, I stayed in a cell for a few days uh was waiting to see the judge and so like a couple of days later i uh i went to see the judge and she was like, oh, okay, you know, we will release you. All you have to do is just uh, community service for like a month or something. I was so incredibly happy to hear that. I was like, I'm, I'm going to do community service for two years. Like, because I, w I was like so happy to get out of there. So as I was about to be released, something else happened unexpected, which I will tell you in uh, another video if there is enough interest. Uh, anyways, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this, and I will speak to you soon.